afternoon. Thank you for joining us. My name is Amanda Sutcliffe Jones. I am the CSA Director of Communications. I welcome you to the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors Candidate Forum. Today we are joined by in um, in studio audience, probably what I should start saying, right? Um, by an in-person audience of over 100 property owners, additionally 140 people that signed up for the webinar. So we appreciate the attendance to this meeting. I do have some housekeeping agenda, uh, agenda items to run through. No I know, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. There we go, perfect. So our agenda for today's meeting is the following. I'm just um, covering our welcome. I ask that the folks in the audience in person, please turn your cell phones off or mute them if you wouldn't mind, just so we don't interrupt the candidates when they're making their presentations. Um, the same request would go to the candidates if you wouldn't mind to turn your cell phones off, that would be great. Um, fire exits are located to the right side of, um, of the podium. We also have restrooms towards the middle and back of the room if you need to use those. We will um, run, excuse me, through a couple more agenda items from myself, um, from the moderator, covering the forum process. You'll hear from your candidates and they will cover their introductions. You'll also hear them cover their candidate statements. I'll run through some election process reminders and then that will conclude our forum. So, a few of my forum process reminders. As you can see, your board candidates are seated in front of you. They are seated in alphabetical order. The board candidates will begin by a three minute introduction. They will be randomly selected. Then after each candidate has a chance to make their candidate introductions, they will begin their six minute candidate choice of topic. Each candidate will um, speak for six minutes and then we will, um, that will be the conduction of the forum. The candidates have been randomly or will be randomly um, selected to make their presentations. Marie Sinkowitz, CSA staff member, has um, volunteered to serve as our timekeeper for this event. She has um, some cards in her hand, so when the candidate reaches one minute, they'll be um, shown a green card. When they reach 30 seconds, they'll be shown a yellow card. And when they reach um, zero seconds, they will be shown a red card. So I will um, make sure to keep track of timing for them so they can keep uh, to their three and six minute speeches. Additionally, there will be no questions at this forum. Questions were taken from the community and collected from the community from September 4th through September 18th. That way we could give each of those questions to the board candidates and they have provided their answers to those questions from the community. Those questions um, along with their candidate uh, biographies as well as their intent to serve the community have been posted to the Sea Pines Living website. That website is seapinesliving.com backslash election candidates. So we certainly encourage you to visit that website to get that information. Candidates may remain after the forum to answer individual questions, but these activities will not be part of the videotape or webinar process. Again, this video meeting is being videotaped and webinar. It's our goal in the communications department to post this video as quickly as possible following the meeting so we can get out to the property owners who are not able to attend either in person or via webinar. And without further ado, we will begin our candidate introductions. Again, they are randomly selected. I will take a seat and I will begin calling them to the podium so they can make their statements. The first candidate, oh, excuse me, my apologies. The first candidate to make their introduction will be Dana Avocat. Dana Avocat is running for the ASPO Board of Directors. Dana, would you approach the podium? Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Dana Avocat, and I'm running for a seat on the ASPO Board. I want to thank all of you for giving your time this afternoon to come and learn about the candidates and the issues. First, some background about me. I've been coming to Hilton Head since I was a young girl in the 60s, and I've owned a villa here since 1978. I married my husband, Diederich, 1983. We lived in Amsterdam, New York, and then London for 17 years. We explored the coasts of Europe, but honestly, we have never found a place that could hold a candle to sea pines. In 2012, we bought a vacation home here on Deer Run Lane, 
that we rented until we moved back and became full-time residents in Sea Pines. So I've been both a homeowner who rented and a full-time resident. I understand the issues that face both groups, and I believe our goals and our concerns are ultimately the same. Once back, I began a second career as a realtor with Keller Williams. My first career was spent in New York as a software developer and then in corporate communications. At Burton Marsteller, I helped companies such as DuPont, Anderson Consulting, and American Express develop their brands and communications. I serve on the gate committee, and I'm also co-president of our neighborhood POA with Alex Cruden, Heritage Pond. I'm running for ASPO because I'm passionate about preserving our community, our quality of life, and our environment. We are on the cusp of a great transition, just like Hilton Head, and we have to get it right. Our community has three stakeholders, property owners, the commercial, and the resort. It's a delicate equilibrium that must be constantly maintained for all three neighbors to happily coexist. Change is a constant. We've rebounded from a terrible recession. Our property values are back up. Hilton Head has been named Best Island for three years running. And Sea Pines is transformed with new amenities. We are looking better than ever. We also have more visitors, more cars, and more revenue than ever. While this has been good for home values and rental income, the congestion has contributed to a deterioration in the quality of life for visitors and residents alike. In season, it's impossible to get in and out of Sea Pines in a timely manner. How many cars and people is enough in our community? When do we lose that exclusive Sea Pines mystique that we all came here for? Aspects role in resolving this situation is to communicate the issues to you honestly and with accurate data so you can voice your preference. We're at a crossroads. We all want Sea Pines to be a place our children can come back to. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Our next candidate that has been randomly selected to make their next introduction is Larry Mofshin. Larry is running for the CSA Board of Directors. Larry? Thank you, Amanda. Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here today to introduce myself and my vision for Sea Pines to the community. My name is Larry Mufton. To many of you, I'm known as one of the organizers of the concerned majority of Sea Pines homeowners. To some of you who follow Facebook, I'm also known as Elmo Shin, but that's a long story. To my, to my kids and grandkids, I'm just popular. Detailed biographical data about me can be found on the Sea Pines website, so I'll be relatively brief. My wife Lois and I are both natives of New Jersey, and I graduated from Rutgers the State University. We spent most of our adult lives living in the Washington, D.C. area, where I attended law school at George Washington University. Lois and I and the kids and now grandkids have been vacationing in Sea Pines since 1986, and we purchased our home and club course in 2002. Virtually my entire legal career was spent representing various sectors in the communications industry, including such well-known companies as Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast, in negotiating complex business transactions. Throughout my long career, I focused on helping my clients get to yes by finding compromises of positions that would allow both parties to win. I learned to listen to the folks on the other side of the table to find what was really important to them so that we could accommodate those significant points in a way that allowed clients to benefit well. If I'm elected to the CSA board, I'll use those skills I developed over 40 years to find compromise solutions to issues that are satisfying to all interested elements of our community. We moved to full-time status in Sea Pines when I retired in 2017. I didn't intend to get involved in civic activities quite so early in my retirement, but last year I saw as a real threat to our community the Alliance's efforts to defeat the now withdrawn resort hotel expansion referendum because they, in my mind, naively thought they would be able to renegotiate the deal. Of course, they were wrong, and the benefits of that deal were lost to our community. Frustrated by the Alliance's efforts to dictate the debate, I help from what we now call the concerned majority of Sea Pines homeowners to inform the uninformed and misinformed about issues of real importance to the community. Our efforts helped elect three members of the CSA board last year. I'm running for the CSA board this year because we're again hearing from a vocal minority 
who attack the current CSA management board and who reject compromise proposals that have been heavily negotiated to satisfy all elements of our community. They again naively believe the resort and commercial interests will come back to the table with significantly larger financial contributions than they are legally required to make. That's both incorrect and ineffectual. We need elected officials who can work with the resort and commercial interests to meet and resolve our issues, not those who will constantly battle those elements in our community to a losing standstill. I'm seeking your vote today, this week, because I believe I am among the three best candidates to fill that role. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. The next candidate to make their introduction is Tom McPhillips. Tom, could you join us at the podium? Will do, Amanda. <coughs> Hello folks, my name's Tom McPhillips. My wife and Robin and I have loved sea pines since we first came here in the 1980s. We still love it today and we want only the best for it. We have been owners of a timeshare, a lot, a condo, and now our home, which sits along the bike path that leads to one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. As owners, we have experienced sea pines on family visits once a year as a part-timer and now as full-time residents. At one point, we even rented our condo. We live in a great neighborhood that includes full-time residents, part-timers, people who are hardly ever here, and people who rent their homes most of the time. I am active in the community on two CSA and ASPO boards, and I'm a volunteer at Habitat for Humanity have been for a long time. I graduated the US Naval Academy and have an MBA from Columbia University. I served as a naval pilot and an officer and retired from the US Navy. At Pfizer, my employer for almost 27 years, my roles evolved and expanded, finishing as vice president of a team that provided customer service, inventory management, account management, and marketing to customers. Our work engage, required engaging businesses and customers to find solutions that would pro provide value and benefit. A key to that was listening and effectively communicating value and benefits. Trust was essential. For the community to move forward, these skills and traits will be important to, the trans to transparently lead Sea Pines into becoming the five-star community that we all can enjoy. I am also a student of history. As it was famously said, if we do not study history, we are doomed to repeat it. As we move forward in sea pines, we need to learn from and apply the lessons of the American experience. America, the country, was formed out of dissent by people willing to stand up and speak their mind. It started over taxes imposed by a government that wasn't listening. People like Patrick Henry, Samuel Adams took the lead and others like Thomas Jefferson put the paper, put the, paper the great dissent document the Declaration of Independence. Recently, I heard Doris Kearns Goodman give an interview. She talked about how our country was shaped by grassroots organizations that rose up to lead great changes like women's suffrage and civil rights. Dissent and disagreement and offering alternative points of view is in our DNA and acceptable and can and has created great things. Thanks for being here and listening. The decision you make with your vote is critical to all of our futures. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. As a reminder, Tom, is, uh, Tom McPhillips is running for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors. Thanks again, Tom. Our next candidate that has been randomly selected is John Ferenkoff. John, can you join us at the podium? John Ferenkoff is running for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors. That was my second line. Oh, That's all right. so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Hi. Well, you already, you know, I'm John Farenkoff. I'm running for the CSA and ASPO board seats. Um, from Cincinnati, Ohio, well, actually born in Dayton, from Cincinnati, Ohio, worked for Provident Bank there from 1972 to 2004 when the company was sold. I was one of the first thousand they fired, so I was out of there. Uh, held very senior roles as financial analyst and internal audit. I served for six years on the health foundation of Cincinnati's Board of Directors. It's a 501c4, about $500 million. I was on the Operations Committee, the Finance Committee, the Investment Committee, and the Audit Committee. I left that position when I basically came down here full time. My history with Sea Pines starts in 1985. 
we, we began coming here on vacation when our son was one years old. We've been coming every year since. Uh, in 1996, I think I decided, or my wife decided we were going to retire here, and she bought a home that I finally saw. Uh, my 50th birthday, I joined the Sea Pines Country Club. And my annual, annual objective since then is to play 200 rounds, of, 200 rounds of golf a year. And I get close every year. In 2006, my wife and I came here for an extended stay. Ended up going to a fundraiser for the Hilton Head Island High School lacrosse team. At that point in time, it was a club sport. I volunteered to be a coach. And now I'm entering my 14th year as an assistant lacrosse coach. And somebody asked me, what do I do? I don't run anymore. I just yell. Uh, in 2009... I felt the need to get, become involved in a community. You know, I kind of was a tourist. I coached lacrosse, but I had no idea what was going on around me. So I joined the Van Lanningham Rotary Club just to see what was going on civically. Going on civically, excuse me. I've been active as a treasurer. I was past president, and I'm a board member. or was a board member. I am currently on the board of the 501c3 arm of the Van Lanningham Rotary Club, the Zach Van Lanningham Scholarship Fund. 2016, I began my journey with the CSA Finance Committee. It, it, it is that reason that I'm running for the board. It, is, it was an absolute blast. It's an ab absolute blast to be on that committee. There's a lot of learning that happens uh, and the amount of work that, and David's not here today, but that David does and Victoria do is pretty amazing. You'll see in my candidate information that I said, talked about uh, conflicts of interest, and my issue with that was we don't have a conflict of interest policy. It's the CSA. I have signed a conflict of interest policy, which I'll get to Amanda to put, hopefully, with my information on the website. In closing, I feel I've been actively involved enough in the Finance Committee to help out this community, and I appreciate your time and vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. The next candidate to make their introduction is Rich Spear. Rich Spear is running for the CSA Board of Directors. Rich, could you join us at the podium? Good afternoon. I've been a full-time resident of Sea Pine since 1998. I first came here in 1970 when I was in Charlotte because it was a free vacation. Um, I'm retired chairman of a financial institution consulting company that worked with clients uh, domestically and internationally for about 35 years. Uh, over the years, I've spent time on boards of major uh, commercial banks, finance companies, check cashing operations, believe it or not. Uh, as well as uh, a number of nonprofits. Uh, I'm immediate past chair of the Arts Center of Coastal Carolina, having been on its board of directors for the past seven years. Uh, I'm also a member of the Junior Jazz Foundation Board of Directors, and I am currently uh, an ASPO director. Um, I graduated from a little school called Georgia Tech. Great school, bad football program, and even worse, basketball program. Uh, I have uh, from uh, I serve on their advisory council for the board of trustees for the university and have served for the past seven years. Uh, my wife Tammy and I are members of St. Luke Church here. Uh, our youngest son Trey was a lifer at Hilton Head Prep. He's now a freshman at Indiana University and I hope he stays at Indiana University and doesn't plunk out, but he's enjoying it quite a bit. We have three other married sons and one grandchild. I was not allowed to put up a picture of the handsomest grandchild that's out here, but I shan't do that. Um, we have, uh, in terms of running for Sea uh, Pines, like all of us, we're here by choice, as you heard from the other candidates. We elected to be here. Uh, whether it was the beach or the golf, or whether it was a combination of the environment, uh, the residential life, and the resort amenities that exist here. Uh, as a past CSA, uh, director and as a current ASPO director, I've been able to develop a broad understanding of the complex issues that we're facing. These are not simple issues. Uh, some of us would like the reality to be different. It's not. Each of the stakeholders has certain rights and responsibilities. There's over a thousand pages of covenants. It took me the better part of three and a half years. And compared to my business career, it is actually almost as complex as the mergers and acquisitions that we were involved with. Uh, as a CSA director, I worked on the Governance Committee. We developed the orientation program for directors, which had not occurred until then, uh, to understand the different uh, conce concepts of what's going on in the organization, the different areas. We rewrote the CSA bylaws. We're in the process now of doing that, as a number of you know, for the ASPO bylaws. 
Uh, we also developed a long-range technology plan. A number of the issues that we have is because we have a technology platform that's based in the 60s, barely in the 70s, I should be more accurate. A lot of the things we'd like to do, we can't do. Uh, but in the, in the, we are in the process of implementing that, and that'll make it different. We also developed a personnel program and put that in place, which I think is important. Uh, as a CSA you, director... Rich, your time is elapsed. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you again, Rich. The next candidate that has been randomly selected is Paula Scanlon. Paula, will you join us to the podium, please? Paula is running for the ASFO Board of Directors. Paula. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. It's good to see this turnout and some familiar faces in the audience. And welcome to everybody joining us by webinar as well. Just a brief bio to get us started. Um, I am your basic Gamecock. I graduated from the University of South Carolina. I also attended <clears throat> Georgetown University and made my career in marketing and communications. I worked with Coca-Cola, Verizon, several advertising agencies, and most recently with a national nonprofit organization. My husband, Mike, who's hiding out there in the back, and I made our home mostly in the Washington, D.C. area, and I am mother to Arnold Palmer Scanlon, a three-year-old Shetland sheepdog. So you may know me as Arnie's mother. Like most of you, I was a visitor at Hilton Head. Um, for many long years, like 40 long years ago, I first came down here. Our first home actually was not in Sea, uh, not in sea Pines. It was in Long Cove. And we lived in Long Cove for about a year. My husband, God love him, flunked retirement, and we went back to Washington. So it was from there that we bought our villa in Harbor Town. And then after that, we bought our, our primary home, which is in the club courts area. I do enjoy volunteering uh, here at Sea Pines and also other places on the island. I am a board member of Memory Matters. I serve on the CSA Strategic Planning Committee. I participate in the Hilton Head chapter of 100 Women Who Care, and I'm an usher at my church. Lastly, I'm just running for one position, the ASPO uh, position on the ASPO board, and we'll talk about that later. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. The next candidate who's been randomly selected is Barry Barth. Barry, can you join us at the podium, please? Barry Barth is running for the ASPO and CSA boards. Thanks, Amanda. And thanks uh, to all of you for being here today and for the folks that are on the webinar. As Paula said, it's great to know there are 140 people or whatever that are here outside of this room. I'm Barry Barth. I'm a current CSA and ASPO board member running for a second term and a full-time Sea Pines resident. My wife, Barbara, and I, she's right over there, uh, owned a villa in Sea Pines for 11 years as part-timers and purchased our home four years ago. We both love Sea Pines and have a number of great friends and feel fortunate to live here. We have two sons, one in Philadelphia and one in New York and are blessed with two great daughter-in-laws and four grandchildren. I'm a proud graduate of the University of Notre Dame and majored in communications. I went on to a number of positions in the television broadcasting business and retired four years ago with a 30 plus year career managing television stations. My last stop was in Augusta, Georgia, where I managed a Fox station for 11 years before retiring and moving permanently to Sea Pines. Additional bio information and why I wish to serve statement is online at csaliving.com and um, at the CSA office. Thanks. I'll tell you more later about uh, how I feel about how things are going. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Our next candidate to address the community is Paul Crunkleton. Paul, if you would join us at the podium. Paul Crunkleton is running for the ASPO Board of Directors. Uh, Paul. Either, either we have the le best for last or I drew the short end of the stick. I'm oh, not no. sure where. But <laughs> anyhow, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. It's a great crowd. I can't believe how big a crowd there is here. Anyhow, Millie and I moved full time to Sea Pines Plantation in 2000. But like everybody else, we spent a lot of time here prior to being here full time. We bought a timeshare, Spice Bush, in the 80s. We bought a villa, Plantation Club, in the 90s which we did ran on the short-term market, and then we bought our current residence in 1998. 
And I've always said that if you're going to be living in a place full time, you, you better get involved in the community if you want it to be as best as it can be. So for that end, uh, I had uh, currently serve on the CSA board, but I'm not running for re-election. Uh, I had previously served on the maintenance and beautification committee, currently serve on the land unit, land unit management committee, the safety and security committee, and the gate reconfiguration committee. I've also served in the town as a member of the circle to circle committee and had volunteered as a red coat for the heritage golf tournament and worked for Habitat for Humanity as a volunteer. I currently volunteer for Meals on Wheels, Second Helping, and Hilton Head Heroes. My business career, I was in the chemical industry with Eastman Chemical Company. And um, also while I was working, I served as president of the National Account Management Association and treasurer of the Sales Association of the Chemical Industry. I had the opportunity, Eastman, to be in uh, various sales and management positions uh, I did have the opportunity to move to uh, Europe, Germany to be specific, to start our first global customer uh, program with the big three German chemical companies, uh, Siba Geige and Dell in Switzerland. I retired as director of global customers for our container plastic business. Uh, in this business opportunity, uh, I'm gonna put my glasses on here. In this business opportunity, we were required to get buy-in from various interest groups to be able to achieve the best results for all. That meant your customer, your company, your industry, your community. You needed to get consensus. You needed to get compromise from all if all parties expect to be, get positive outcomes. This skill allowed me to be successful in business, and I hope this skill will allow me to be a good representative of all of you in the ASPO board. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Thank you to all the candidates for those introductions. We certainly appreciate it. At this point in the forum, we will now move to the candidate presentations. Each candidate, again, will be randomly selected to make their presentations. Each candidate will have six minutes to speak on their topic of choice. Again, our timekeeper will uh, note one minute, 30 seconds, and then zero time remaining. Candidates have been randomly selected. And the first candidate is Tom McPhillips. Tom, will you join us at the podium? Sure. Thanks. I'll do that. That's why I came, I think. <laughs> Hello again. As Amanda just said, my name is Tom McPhillips, and I'm running for both boards and to be your residential representative on the CSA. It is great that so many of you are here and on the phone participating in the governance of our community. Although I will spend most of my time today focused on items primarily related to CSA, I do want to say up front and emphasize that ASPO plays a very important role in our community. And at this point, it needs to be a vital ongoing entity uh, as we move forward in time and not diluted by any proposed bylaw changes. There are 17 representatives on the CSA board. Eight are appointed by our commercial community partners and nine are elected to serve by residential property owners. Those eight commercial representatives for which you as a resident play no role in selecting, will always focus on a direction that will enhance their business prospects and profit. It is as to be expected. I am running to be a residential property owner representative, and if elected, will always focus entirely on preserving and enhancing the quality of life for residents of Sea Pines Plantation. My relationship with the businesses will be to find compromise solutions that work for you. I decided to run for office to help reach the compromises needed to bring the community together and overcome the animosity and the lack of trust. I believe it can be accomplished. I'd like to review our current financial situation briefly and discuss a few financing options that will allow us to become a premier residential community, bring some equity to the equation and avoid an almost 30% permanent assessment increase and permanent tax on the sale of homes under which is under consideration. 
I feel the action of accepting these options will help unite our community. Today, we are spending beyond our budgets and our financial situation is deteriorating. Recently, CSA announced we will have about a $2.5 million operating loss for 2018. The plans that have been proposed will drive us further in the red. This includes the work yet to be done for the gallery shops. The good news is that we still have a great opportunity to resolve our financial situation if compromise can be achieved, and importantly, the inequities of our community's finances and governance are addressed. Clearly, the businesses can benefit from compromise. In 2017, the residential property owners' assessments contributed about 54% to the cost of running sea pines. Gate fees and permits covered about 40%. All the commercial interests within our gates contributed about $500,000 or 4%. I want to emphasize that it is from all the businesses. If you're doing the math, you realize that 2% is missing. Much of that is from the mayor at Grand Ocean, which is outside of our back gate. The pay, they paid almost 300,000 for the guest access to our community. That far exceeds any of the commercial businesses which reside entirely inside our gates and intuitively draw on far more security, infrastructure, and administrative resources than the Marriott Grand Ocean. Solution one to help our financing is to charge guests of rental properties managed by the resort the same per vehicle charge paid by homeowners that either manage their own rentals or use a different property management company. If we did this, if this was agreed to, this could produce over 700,000 annually for the community and resolve an inequity. Some seems like a no brainer to me. This is clearly a path through, path through charge to renters, provides no real competitive market advantage to the resort, nor would it likely have any financial impact on their bottom line. Solution number two, it has been reported that the resort has agreed to pay 0.75 for its annual assessment. That's a move in the right direction and identical to what it was more than a year ago. It's still 0.25 below the covenant requirements, which compliance would yield over 100,000. Solution number three is to eliminate the marketing funds established by the latest gate agreement. In the future, this agreement would reportedly provide over 250,000 annually to the three large commercial entities to use as they see fit. Just as a reminder, these three pay about 500,000 today um, to us in assessments. In total, these would raise over a million dollars annually. Will these alone solve our financial problems? Unfortunately, they won't. We residents will need to contribute and other changes will be needed. Given the community's needs and lack of trust, a short-term special assessment, three years, and some short-term borrowing will work without establishing the proposed permanent increases to, and will allow to CSA to rebuild finances and revitalize our community. We all have a common goal in our community, to maintain its natural beauty and have a peaceful and serene place to live. To achieve this, we need to compromise and to work collaboratively on equitable solutions, one of which your views are sought out, accounted for, and respected. I promise you that I will work to, to that end and do it in a transparent manner. If you have any questions, please email me, call me, I'll be here afterwards, and thank you very much. I promise to serve you with commitment and honor and transparency if elected. Thank you, Tom. Again, as a reminder, Tom McPhillips is running for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors. Our next candidate is Barry Barth. Barry, will you please join us at the podium? I told you I'd come back. Um, now it's time to get down to business. For reasons of brevity, I'm going to make some observations, primarily a bullet point form, but we'll drill down further if necessary. To make it clear, I am not an Alliance member and disagree with most of their positions. And I noticed the candidates that are aligned with the Alliance never mentioned they're with the Alliance so far. So maybe we'll hear more later. Now, what I'm for, 
I'm for a board that sets direction for Brett Martin and his talented department head team, and then steps back and let them do their jobs. I fully support the needs-based strategic plan and the necessary expenditures to deal with all of the infrastructure, our storm pipes, our lagoons, our dredging, our, build bri uh, our bridge building, um, all identified by the Maintenance Enhancement and Major Projects Committee portion of the strategic plan. I believe that all of the stakeholders need to pay their or our fair share. We now are significantly increasing our gate fee revenue from the daily fee now up to $8 from six and on the pathway to reach $10 and the recent commercial gate fee increase from $6 to $10. In addition to the gate fee increases, I support the CSA Finance Committee's financial recommendations, which are implement a real estate transfer fee, increase all revenues from current assessments, increase the resort assessment, increase the commercial assessment, increase us, yes, the residential assessment, access lending markets if it's necessary, and um, do all of this to improve our revenues, infrastructure, and services. I'm for continued improvement in our communications. As communications chair, I continue, along with our committee, to work with Brett Barton, CSA president, and Amanda Sutcliffe-Jones, our moderator today, who's director of communications, on many of the communication initiatives with a special emphasis on improving second homeowner communication and involvement using emails, webinars, meeting recordings, and emerging technologies as they develop. I'm for a deeper understanding with partnerships to resolve issues within our community. In my ASPO role, I am for and supportive of linkage between the POAs, the regimes, and ASPO. I'm for ASPO and CSA assisting homeowner groups interested in getting support and advice for landscaping entrances and common areas. I'm for ongoing security involvement related to parking on T streets, especially in the beach oriented neighborhoods. I'm for the upgrade of our IT platform that's also included in the strategic plan, especially improving efficiency and security at our entry gates, including Tower Beach. I'm for increased ASPO membership, including a checkoff option to accompany our annual CSA assessments. I feel the one-stop option will bring increased ASPO membership and involvement. I'm for a better understanding for most homeowners in the varying roles and responsibilities of ASPO and CSA. I'm for respect and civility. Remember, we're friends and neighbors. Let's remember the post-Matthew and Irma support and pride we all felt. I'm for consensus building based on mutual understanding and trust. I'm for facts and accuracy and a believer in Reagan's trust but verify mantra. I'm for hearing and crossing my fingers for the Sea Pines Resort expansion plan, including homeowner participation in amenity options. I'm for Amanda's timely communications and Brett Martin's personal messages. Keep it up. I'm for all of the residents who show up for community coffees, board meetings, and special topic meetings. I also look forward to seeing new faces and meeting you in person. I also answered a number of questions from residents submitted on cpinesliving.com. And you can go to my candidate page and read my answers if you haven't done that already. I ask that you reelect me, Barry Barth, for a second term for CSA and ASPO. Thanks. Thank you, Barry. Our next candidate that will join us at the podium is Rich Spear. To be clear, I'm also not an Alliance candidate and never have been, never will be. I also suggest you vote for Barry. <laughs> that and a nickel will get you nothing. Uh, the next three to five years are going to determine how well we're going to succeed as a community. All of us enjoy low fees. We're the second lowest in the island. And when we talk about a 30% increase, we start to quiver. That's $300 a year to make a massive difference in the quality of our lives. It is a silly, false economy that we're failing with, 
and it will affect you, and it does affect our property values today. Uh, from my point of view, if the next three to five years are determining how successful we will be, I think it remains critical to continue the stewardship that was begun 50 plus years ago. But more importantly, I think it's important to understand that being a member of both boards is critical. When I first joined the ASPO board four plus years ago and the CSA board four years ago, I had very little understanding of what that meant. I will tell you that having served three years on CSA board, I represented individual property owners, period. I represented as ASPO individual property owner members, which unfortunately is just a percentage of our property owners on the island. As treasurer, I've urged for years continued increase in membership and increasing fees so that we have the financial capability to sustain the rights and obligations we have as individual property owners. And if any of you in here are not members of ASPO, I strongly urge you to join it. It's $35 a year. Now back in 1970, whatever, when that was approved, that was the equivalent of a few hundred dollars today. But today it barely funds $140,000 a year operation. I have and will continue to represent ASPO members uh, as we deal with very complex issues. There are over a thousand pages. I made the mistake of covenants, rules, court settlements, agreements, judgments. And it is not an easy read. I made the mistake, there's a gentleman sitting in the back saying, I'd like to simplify all this and put this together. Carl told me, you've got to be kidding me. There was a committee that worked for a couple of years with six or seven lawyers. Can you imagine six or seven lawyers working together? I'll leave that alone. Uh, it was an impossible task, but understanding those is important, and I think I have a good understanding of it. As a Class A CSA board member, if I am elected to a second term, I will continue to represent residential property owners in CSA. Like many organizations, we have multiple stakeholders. We have commercial interests. We have a resort that's invested hundreds of millions of dollars. And I was one of the shareholders, one of the largest shareholders, before it was sold to Bill Goodwin. They have done nothing but keep their word and make massive investments on our behalf. It has improved all of our values. And we argue about a few parking spaces, but we have a beach club to go to. We have golf courses that are world class. We have an island that's picked the best in the world. And we complain about our dues. And we complain about what's not done. I would make an observation, having served now for this period of time, we waste an enormous amount of time listening to and responding to lack of facts. I go with Senator Moynihan who many years ago said, we can have differences of opinions, but let's not disagree on facts. Facts. We're not encumbered by those today in our political environment. We're not encumbered by those with the alliance. In case I wasn't clear, we're not encumbered by those with the alliance. We are forcing very good people to spend tons and tons of time responding to inaccurate statements on a continual basis and an uncivil challenging. Thousands of hours were put in by these board members, well before my time. How many of you remember a guy by the name of Bob Mang? Anybody remember Bob? This whole transformation, <laughs> Carl does, this whole transformation of CSA was started by Bob Mang when he decided to replace all of the management of CSA and convince people like Charlie Miner, where's Mark? Mark Griffith, Michael, I still hold him accountable for some things, but I won't talk about that. Uh, Michael Tucker to be board members. They got rid of all the bums, all of them. They brought in first class management and began to delegate authority to them. We complain about communications, but how many of you want to complain about communications today versus seven years ago? How many of you were here seven years ago? How many of you remember George Breed? Okay. How many of you remember the Hurricane Matthew and the difference in communications? But we sit here and we complain. The fact is, from my perspective, there's been a major change and transformation over the last seven years. When I joined the board three or four years ago, I thought it was a work in progress. I worked with very large organizations around the world on change, and I thought this was a three to five years still to go. And they had begun that process. They brought in the management team. They put them in place, the leadership on the board that you see here today, the management that's been put in place, which I consider to be first class, and delegating responsibility to it, not trying to micromanage them. Uh, physical responsibility, is Dave Borghese here at all? No, Dave's not here. Dave, under the Finance Committee, which I'm also a member of, has spent the last seven years, I think he's on his eighth, no, sixth year now, right? It seems longer sometimes. Uh, took a broken financial fiscal report where nobody had been doing any investment in this plantation for decades. They were saving money to settle lawsuits. Saving money to settle lawsuits. Not repairing the infrastructure and not spending the money when it needed to be 
and he developed a sound physical policy. He brought in Victoria uh, Shanahan. Is Victoria here somewhere? Oh, she's not. But brought in the staff that you see here today that's responsible for it. Brought in a professional reserve study, which we completed. And I've been very proud to serve as a part of that finance committee uh, for the last several years. And I am fully supportive of the strategic plan. And I'm 100% supportive of the fiscal plan that has been presented by uh, David Borghese and the Finance Committee. And we all, by the way, since there's amnesia setting in, we all approve that overwhelmingly, both the strategic plan and the other recommendation. But Thank that, you, I'm done. Your time is elapsed. <laughs> it's always elapsed. <laughs> I'm a Democrat, so it's always <laughs> run out of time. Thank you, Rich. Uh, as, a, as a reminder, Rich Spear, as a reminder, Rich Spear is running for the CSA Board of Directors. Our next candidate that has been randomly selected is Paula Scanlon. Paula, please join us at the podium. That's a tough act to follow, <laughs> I have to say. Anyway, thank you, Amanda. And also my thanks to the CSA and to ASPO for providing this opportunity for us to speak directly to you, our neighbors. Um, I'd first like to share with you uh, or speak with you in general terms about what I call the, the shared experience. And it's really kind of four things. Most of us visited Sea Pines at one point in time before we purchased our property here. Another thing is during our property purchases, we all received the South Carolina disclosure that acknowledged the covenants and the governance by which we property owners live. We've watched the Goodwin family come in and invest nearly $100 million in their efforts to upgrade the prestige of the resort. We have much more in common, really, than not, with the simple fact that we all purchased a piece of paradise here, and we're still here. Most importantly, I believe that the people here are, by and large, happy people. That brings us to today. And I have to confess that it pains me to see the divisiveness in our community. The Sea Pines community, I go, the Sea Pines community and I go back a long way. I first met Charles Frazier in the 70s when I worked for the Sea Pines company at his development up in Virginia. You probably didn't know he had a development up in Virginia, but I'm here to tell you he did. His concept of a master plan community with innovative and ecologically motivated design has stayed with me since those early days. We property owners have a vested interest in the success of our community. We have seen tough times. We have seen ownership changes, bankruptcies, hurricanes, and I see a community that is aging out and I see a community in need of critical maintenance. I have a perspective that includes our history as well as our hopes and needs for a world-class community and future. I bring a healthy respect for our master plan and the covenants that protect it. And I recognize that after 60 years, yes, some covenants may need to be revisited. Throughout my career, I have been involved in strategic planning and I most recently participated in the development of the CSA strategic plan. I would describe myself to you as a common sense, level-headed person with a priority toward inclusion. I spent many years at the table negotiating sponsorships and multi-million dollar deals and media agreements. Nothing was accomplished there without good listening skills, trust, and an ability to identify middle ground win-win situations. A little bit about our current situation. I believe we all agree that Charles Frazier was a genuine visionary. But in all these years, I've never heard anybody describe him as a financial genius. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. This community was one of the most award-winning internationally recognized developments of its time. And I have confidence that we can fund and execute the strategic plan and bring Sea Pines back to its former splendor. In summary, we have a lot of work to do. A lot of work, but the task before us is not insurmountable. But like I said, I'm running for a board seat on ASPO. So what do I want for ASPO and the property owners? Five basic things. Increased communication from the ASPO board. 
maybe a member newsletter to provide status of ASPO projects, board meetings, board minutes, what have you, increased dialogue between residents and board members. This requires the compilation of an email list of members that currently does not exist. If I'm elected, that would change. We need accurate information. We need to ensure that residents know the real facts on all the issues. And residents need to be empowered to make rational decisions without spin and without scare tactics. Basically, ASPO should consider running their own website. I worry that a lot of neighbors don't understand the difference between CSA and ASPO and where the accountabilities lay. We need a better understanding of current ASPO responsibilities, which are really two things. Protect the property owner's rights under the covenants and ensure the means to protect those rights. I think opportunity exists for even small things like leveraging our strength of numbers. One idea that could be explored is a simple contract negotiation for a master contract with some of our daily vendors, like our trash pickup. Everybody's doing their own. And most importantly, we would benefit from increased diligence with our land use efforts. Due to our size and scope, most efforts are voluntary. We need to increase the monitoring of unkept and dilapidated residential and underdeveloped properties. We need to ensure that all are properly maintained, thereby continuing to protect our property values. That's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I, I, I close by asking for your vote in November, and if elected, I will do what I just outlined. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Again, as a reminder, Paula is running for the ASPO Board of Directors. Our next candidate we are welcoming to the podium is Dana Advocat. Dana, if you could join us at the podium. Good afternoon, I'm back. First of all, I want to say that I am endorsed and proud to be endorsed by the Alliance for the Future of Sea Pines. I also have no conflict of interest and I've signed a statement to that effect. I want to talk a little bit about ASPO. ASPO is the cornerstone of our governance or a cornerstone. Its job is to represent you, the Sea Pines property owner, and ASPO is more important than ever. It actually has four goals that are outlined in the, the bylaws. First, to represent you and communicate about issues. Second, to ensure good governance and financial oversight of CSA. Third, to ensure economic fairness and discipline by providing financial oversight. And lastly, to maintain a high quality of life for homeowners and guests. Today, we're at a crossroads where ASPO is concerned. The goals set out in the bylaws are not being met. This summer, a new set of ASPO bylaws were drawn up and circulated. The new version is an attempt to weaken the, uh, your influence in our government and reduce ASPO's role. From your public letters, I know that many of you have concerns. ASPO's new bylaws will be one of the most important issues that we face in 2019. And I promise that if you elect me, I will preserve your power in our governance. Let's talk about communications for a second, getting you accurate information. Right now, we are in an unacceptable situation where ASPO does not manage its own membership database. It communicates infrequently, if ever. ASPO has no events, and it does not manage its emails. We have no opt-in, opt-out directory of membership. Some of these functions are fulfilled by CSA, but it's no surprise that RPOs have become disgruntled and dropped some, their membership. ASPO should be a resource for you. It should present issues. This means presenting differing viewpoints. Right now, we have one monolithic point of view, mostly coming from CSA, that's a very commercial viewpoint. ASPO also needs to be service-oriented and provide information about its own services, local business resources, and an opt-in or opt-out member directory. One of the Facebook pages has a phenomenal database of, of resources. Why not ASPO? ASPO's members website should be collecting its own data and its own dues. 
with 65% of homeowners living out of state, ASPO has to engage via the internet. Today, it's easy, inexpensive, and actually, there's an ASPO website ready to go. Um, let's talk about good governments, governance for a second. Um, to ensure good governance, the ASPO bylaws <clears throat> require financial oversight of CSA. To do that, we require transparency. Board members should be able to see any agreement made by CSA on our behalf, and so actually should you. This includes any document that affects RPO covenant granted rights, CSA revenues or expenditures. The gate agreement is a good example of not meeting this requirement. The agreement appears to channel up to $300,000 a year into a commercial marketing fund. How can ASPO ensure covenant compliance if it could not review the document? This has to change. <clears throat> Economic fairness and fiscal discipline also involves transparency. CSA is ending the year with a $2.5 million deficit and must borrow to meet running expenses. This year, CSA purchased a $1.4 million building without funding in place. In the corporate world, our situation would call for a hiring freeze and a halt on spending for not critical items. I'm not suggesting we shut down. I am suggesting that we do not spend beyond our means and that CSA focus on priorities like road work and stormwater drainage until funding is in place. Interestingly, the funding for the trolley is locked in, costs roughly a million dollars a year, 10% of CSA's annual budget. It's a commercial amenity, taking riders to commercial centers. 80% of our owners do not use it. How is it that the trolley is fully funded and yet our community infrastructure and stormwater drainage funding is not locked in? This year's shortfall is why CSA is asking us to approve a referendum that would place 95% of the increased revenue burden on property owners. That's not fair. ASPO should be insisting on increased contributions from the commercial entities and the resort, and they are not. The commercialization and congestion in Sea Pines is probably the number one concern for many of us. ASPO must involve this, this itself in this discussion. How many bodies and cars are enough on our roads and on, a, on a daily basis? Our commercial neighbors seem to think that the more the better. We need a solution that is acceptable to everyone, not just the commercial entities in the resort. When you vote, think of me as a board member who will push for transparency, work on fairness, and preserve our environment. I'm happy to say that Alliance supports all of these positions. Thank you very much and thank you for coming. Thank you, Dana. Again, Dana is running for the ASPO Board of Directors as a reminder. Our next candidate that will address the community is Larry Moffson. Larry, please join us at the podium. There's no doubt that this is an important election for our community. With all the rhetoric that's been flowing for months, I think it's safe to say this election will provide a very strong sense of what type of community the vast majority of residential property owners want for sea pines. Let's get two things clear at the beginning. All eight of the candidates before you have strong business backgrounds and have served on committees and on ASP for ASPO and CSA. So there's little difference in our real basic qualifications. The real difference is how each of us would use their skills on the boards to pursue two very different views for the future of our community. I love sea pines, the way it has been and the way it is today. And the vision I share with four of our candidates recognizes what makes sea pines so special on Hilton Head. I see Sea Pines as a place where residential property owners, the resort, and commercial establishments live and work cooperatively to maintain and enhance the unique lifestyle that Sea Pines provides. If elected, I will represent you, the residential properties, by working with the resort and business owners to strengthen our intentionally blended residential resort community. I'll pursue policies that encourage their continuing investment by the resort and commercial businesses and enhance our residential property values. As I mentioned earlier, my wife Lois, who's in the audience today, and I first brought our three children to Sea Pines as tourists in 1986. 
Many of us in this room and on the, uh, on the video, I'm sure, followed this well-known pattern. We summered here as timeshare owners to tourists for 16 years, enjoying the beaches, bike paths, and golf courses. We ate at Truffles Restaurant. We went to Greg Russell's concerts. We bought our Salty Dog t-shirts as required by all tourists. We finally decided to purchase a vacation home in 2002 and brought our home in club course. From 2003 through 2017, we spent 12 to 14 weeks in Sea Pines, mostly from May through August as summer tourists. Since 2017, we've been full-time residents. It is simply ridiculous for any candidate, as Dana essentially has just suggested, to suggest that the resort and commercial interests are the only ones that benefit from tourists. We all do. Whether they come for a day or a week, they spend their money in sea pines and support the businesses during peak periods that we then get to enjoy during the entire year, including the off season. No less importantly, tourists usually come to love sea pines during their stay, just like we are. They're the people who decide to purchase our homes when we choose to sell. So I vehemently disagree with those on the panel who think Sea Pines was designed to be an exclusive gated residential community or who want to impose policies that would turn it into a private re retirement community. There are plenty of those communities on this island, but Sea Pines is and always will be a resort community that welcomes tourists through our gates to enjoy as we do the many commercial amenities that simply don't exist in other exclusive communities. Of course, like, like any community, there are issues to be addressed and the current board and CSA management are seeking to find acceptable solutions. We need to smartly manage our gate traffic and our infrastructure is aging and needs repair. And because our annual assessments have been limited for so many years by the covenants to the point where we are now among the lowest on the island and truthfully laughable below by comparison to the other communi premier communities on the island, we do need to revise the way our assessments are calculated each year for residents, the resort, and the commercial interests. And if I'm elected, I promise to work with all members of the board to solve our community's problems in a fashion that serves all parties in maintaining the sea pines we moved into and loved. As I briefly noted earlier in negotiating large and small business transactions, I found the most effective way in work to work with my clients was when I tried to put up myself in the other side's shoes. Then the same holds true for working on the CSA board. It's easy for other candidates, Tom, to make a wish list of what residential properties owners would like to have out of any proposal, whether it's a higher gate fee or a lower annual assessments or free pools or waived covenant rights. But a harmonious, thriving community needs to consider what, how we, what we want will impact all parties. I want to say that again. A thriving community needs to consider how what we want will impact all of the parties involved. The resorts and commercial interests have made significant capital investments that have made Sea Pines unique on the island. I will not pound my fist on the table and hope to bully the resort into a response that we can't achieve without their consent. That we can elect board members and they won't they don't have the power to change the covenant. I certainly will not vote uh, threaten to vote against actions and referenda that are needed to meet the needs of the entire community because the resort or commercial businesses choose in good faith to act in their reasonable business interests. That simply won't work. We must work with the resort and business interests to find a mutually beneficial result. The vision of the three alliance back candidates is very different. They see a sea pines that severely restricts tourism to create a private residential retirement community. And they would pursue policies with little regard to the impact such policies may have on the resort or commercial businesses. In fact, they see the resort as the commercial uh, and businesses as the entity. They claim they representing you means they will stand tough until a resort and other businesses cave and renegotiate covenant rights and the great ex uh, gate agreements that have been in existence for well over two decades. They even threaten litigation if they don't get their way. In short, rather than finding harmony for our community, they will continue to pursue hostility, us versus them. That narrow vision will not work. That narrow vision does, not signif significant, does significant harm to our community and will drive away the most likely future property purchasers and ultimately drive down Sea Pines real estate values. As your RPO representative, I will work tirelessly and aggressively to find the best solutions for all three interests in our community. I can be tough, but I will always be fair. That's the only way a true partnership can survive. If you share my vision for Sea Pines and you believe my approach to achieving it is the right one, I ask you to vote for me for CSA board. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. As a reminder, Larry Moshman is running for the CSA board of directors. Our next candidate that we'll ask to come to the podium is Paul Cronkleton. Paul, would you join us at the podium, please? Save the best to last again, I guess. Nope, one more. I know. How about the no, next I, to last I the best? 
Uh, Paul, you are not technically the last. We still have one I know, more. I know. Okay, there we I go. Was, <laughs> but I was close. Is okay. what I, uh, a couple of things. I will not talk six minutes. Second thing, I want to say that I have been fully endorsed by my wife, Millie, or at least she tells me she's endorsing me. I'm not sure which. I'm not going to get what John says after me and the others. I'm not going to get into all the things, the details and such. Uh, we've heard it. We've got a really great place to live. Uh, I'm, I'm saying to myself, what the heck are our problems? But everybody has problems. What I'm going to do is take this time to do what I call the three C's. The first is the community. I'm going to use my glasses on this. The first is the community. And we all chose to live here. And we understand that Sea Pines Plantation is a residential resort community. It's been that way since Charles Fraser founded it. However, you notice I use the word residential first, but the resort and other commercial entities are an important part of our community. And they have, just as we've spent time and effort and money in improving and making our properties more valuable than they were when we got them, the uh, resort and commercial entities have spent a lot of money investing in to maintain their property and improving it to the point that it is, uh, a Sea Pines Plantation is a world-class uh, location. Now, we almost adhere to the covenants, as complicated as they are. It is in our collective interest that we maintain our community as first class. It helps no one if we let our community standards decline. The second C is communicate, and that means all of us. All residential property owners must communicate our needs, our wants, our concerns to our elected board, our POA, our committees, our town, and our commercial neighbors. Uh, we should do this in a timely manner and in a tone that reflects that we are a resort, excuse me, that we are a re residential resort community. At the same time, we should expect uh, timely, clear communications back to us to address our needs and wants. If we all, get, if we expect to get all of this done together for the common good, and common sense communication will always get the best results. And the third C in my mind is compromise. Regardless of what we think, everybody in this community has the rights and obligations under the covenants that guide our community. Sometimes we like them, sometimes we think they're outdated. Thus, if we want to change this best for all members of the community, we must work to compromise and achieve results that will be best for all residential resort community. Remember, the mission of ASPO, and I'm running for ASPO, is to represent the common interest of all Sea Pines property owners in all matters. And the ASPO does this by ensuring compliance with all covenants and by communicating and acting upon issues of importance to the residential property owner. This cannot be done in a vacuum. Remember, we are a community and we must communicate to all and in the end must seek compromise that will be in the best interest of residential property owners. So if I'm lucky enough to uh, receive a votes to allow me to be part of the board next year, that's great. If I'm not, I'm still going to be working my buns off. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I will do that. Yes, sir. Um, as a reminder, Paul. Yes, sir. I, I was working on it. Yeah. Um, as a reminder, Paul Crunkleton is running for the ASPO Board of Directors. Um, John Ferenkoff, will you join us at the podium? Thank you. You ain't first or last. Who remembers that quote out of Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights? Probably just me. <laughs> anyway, uh, if, if you know me, you know I'm kind of a, a, a music nut. And so who remembers uh, Dave Mason, English singer? Okay. What would he say? There ain't no good guys. There ain't no bad guys. Just you and me and we just disagree. Huh? There's one thing, though. We can all agree on here today. We need to somehow somehow solve the CSA financial issues that face us. Next five years are going to be critical for CSA, the residents, and our commercial businesses. We've seen a deterioration in the funding and the liquidity of CSA in the last few years. And in my three years in the finance committee, I've come to watch this and come to enjoy trying to figure it out. And I think I can help you with my experience. But anyway. CSA has done a couple things that we need to be proud of. They did a 2016 reserve study. It's basically a database of all the property we own. It tells us when we need to replace it and how much we think it's going to cost. It's an interactive model, and we use it a lot in the finance committee, and it really gives us good stuff and good information. 
on May May the third, excuse me, 2017, we we received a stormwater assessment study at our community coffee. It prioritized our major deficiencies in our stormwater system. The budget for the first nine year period from that study was about $13.3 million or an average of about $1.5 million a year. That's a pretty big number. It's not new to us, but we, we're sizing the pipe. Um, we need to fund that. The prioritized commitments out of the stormwater study need to be further refined when we do our financial modeling and financial forecasting on the finance committee. We don't get, a, get tight enough information on that. But anyway, these two studies have kind of told us we got some things to worry about. We got to spend some money. We're not, we don't have a good equation going forward. We do some budget stuff that, uh, you know, we have a lot of enhancements and things we want to do that cost money and those push back are in stormwater and other enhancements. So that's not a good equation. Again, we, we keep, you know, we're not going you know, to, to say a word, but we're not going to, we're kicking the can down the road a little bit anyway. Uh, the 2018 budget process had a huge deficit basically because of the Greenwood Drive repaving. We had to push enhancements and other things back and back to not have a bigger deficit. So we're in a, not in a good situation. What we do have is a good budget process here. We need to, but we change, need to change the focus on what we're looking at. First things we need to fix are infrastructure, stormwater, and make sure we replace our capital assets first. Secondly, we need to build our reserves to where they need to be for the capital replacement. And also we need to take the $2.5 million reserve we have for emergency, a la Hurricane Math. We, we collected five plus million dollars. We'll probably spend it all. We need to make that, that balanced $2.5 million plus whatever the annual assessment would be for that. So we need to grow it every year and come up with a big reserve. It's not a really a big reserve. It's basically one times our normal assessment. And with a big storm, we're going to need it. Then we spend on enhancements, the stuff we want. And finally, we have a balanced budget each year. Before we can ask for funding, more, for, more funding from our residential property owners, our commercial and a resort, we need to see a, a multi-year detailed plan out of CSA. I know we can put it together there, it's just a matter of doing it. Uh, this plan needs to reserve, include a way to lock down the, the reserve, capital reserve fund so we always have a, a proper amount laid aside in case we need it, need it. And sometimes things need to be replaced. You know, they said we need to grow our, our uh, stormwater fund, or not our stormwater fund, our emergency fund to equal one assessment. Any increased assessment we put through needs to have some shutoff provision. If we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing with stormwater, our reserves, then we stop funding. That's it. The Galleria Shops purchase 2018 will come with it a new building, reconfiguring roads and streets, changes to the guard station coming in, building a leisure trail to Publix, and also a return bridge to the pass office from the gate to turn around to people that didn't pay. My guess is all in all this front end of the Sea Pines Resort, Sea Pines Country Club set area out there, will be about a four to five million dollar cash requirement. To take care of everything we need to do before we get to the gate. I believe that this this expenditure should come with a specific separate rep, separate separate excuse me separate referendum requiring re approval of the resort and and the property under 75% plus one. That way we can collect the money we need just for that and spend it on that. I'm saying probably a three to five year special special assessment to, to build the money to take to build out the front. Uh, treat it like a construction loan, escrow the money, and use it only for that purpose. Anything left over goes back to the, the, per, the folks that put it in, the resort, the commercial businesses, and residential property owners. Anyway, that's kind of my thought. And in closing, you know, I was going to come up with a different song. Your time has oh, elapsed. Sorry. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> okay, it was Red Green Show. We're all in this together. Oh. And I thought, you know what? 
Again, as a reminder, John Ferencoff is running for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors. I'd like to take a moment to thank again all of the candidates that are serving for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors elections. I do want to run over quick election process reminders for our property owners. As you can see on the slides, the CSA Board and ASPO, excuse me, CSA and ASPO Board of Director election ballots will be mailed out on November 1st. CSA ballots, um, each Sea Pines property owner in good standing will receive a CSA ballot, one for each property owned in Sea Pines. For ASPO, membership in ASPO is voluntary, therefore only one primary member of ASPO will receive one ASPO ballot. Again, that means, for example, if you own three properties in Sea Pines, you would receive three CSA ballots, but your ASPO membership would, um, would, requ would require one ballot for ASPO. You vote for a maximum of three candidates on the CSA ballot and a three maximum candidates on the ASPO ballot. Ballots received with more than three candidates selected will be voided. Elliot Davis is our CPA and they validate our elections. They are also the, the uh, receiver of the ballots themselves. Ballots do not get sent directly to CSA. They get sent to Elliot Davis, which is located in Charleston, South Carolina. If elected, the candidates will serve three-year terms beginning on January 1st, 2019, and their terms will end on December 31st, 2021. As a reminder, ballots need to be returned directly to Elliot Davis, our CPA, by December 1st, and they should be postmarked by that date. So you've heard a lot from your candidates today. We have this information, uh, why they wish to serve their community, their biographies, their answers to the questions from the community on our website. That is the uh, website address. It's cpinesliving.com backslash election candidates. I encourage all of our property owners to visit that website to learn more about the candidates for both CSA and ASPO. As a reminder, a Meet the Candidates brochure will be included in your ballot. If for some reason you don't have a computer or don't use um, internet, we will include a Meet the Candidates brochure in your ballot with your mailing. And again, like I mentioned, biographies, why they wish to serve um, can be found on our website. As a quick reminder for the actual event itself, questions from the candidates were already taken and collected from the community in advance from September 4th to September 18th. Their answers to the questions can be found on our website, so we will not take questions from the floor from this meeting. If you would like to, if you're in audience, you're more than welcome to stay behind. The candidates will, um, will stay behind and answer questions if you'd like them to, um, but it will not be part of the formal meeting and it will not be part of the webinar or videotaped. Speaking of videotape and webinar, the uh, CPINES Community uh, Communications Department will work as quickly as possible to get this video available for you guys so you can go back and watch it on our website and we'll be sending it out via email as well to you. Couple of process reminders as well. There we go, already on the slide, look at that. So again, ballots will be mailed out on the 1st of, um, 1st of November. They are due back by the 1st of December. Please allow three to four dates for post, uh, three to four days for postal delivery of your ballots. Sometimes we get calls on um, November 1st asking where ballots are located and they do not get physically mailed from the printer until the 1st. So please allow three to four days. Um, if you're out of state or if you're out of country, which we do have some property owners um, in that circumstance, uh, I would say about a four to five day window, but you're more than welcome to contact CSA directly if you do not see your ballot within that time frame. And again, the, um, the ballot date is mailing on November 1st. In closing, I'd like to thank each of our candidates for their interest in serving the Sea Pines community. I think that they would also join me in thanking all of our property owners who were able to attend in person at this meeting, as well as everybody who's able to attend via webinar, and for those who will go back and watch the video afterwards. This includes the Meet the Candidates Forum for the CSA and ASPO Board of Directors. We appreciate your attendance. Thank you again.